What's up, Brewery Life? Jasper here. So we've shown you how to filter beer, just transfer beer, carbonate beer. Today we're going to show you how all that hard work goes into kegs. So a simple kegging setup will get, uh, will get lined up and then I'll talk about it. Cheers. All right, so on our bright tank, you can also use this as a serving tank and avoid kegging, just hooking the bottom straight up to your draft lines. But here we're, we're kegging this beer. So in this bright tank, our volumes of CO2 are about 2.8. You do lose some volumes when you're kegging, about 0 0.1, 0 0.15. So you want to keep that in mind when you're uh, carbonating your bright tank. So in bigger breweries, maybe above 10,000 barrels a year, definitely above 100,000 barrels a year, kegs are filled upside down, clean filled upside down. Um, it's a way to get a little more accurate volume in the kegs. That sphere is a set distance from the bottom of the keg if it's upside down, and it'll fill it up to exactly 15 and a half gallons. Where if you fill it up this way, you're pulling off the top air, so usually you fill up a little heavy, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 um, gallons over the 15 and a half gallon full half barrel mark. Um, not such a big deal when you're messing around with uh, a pub system, but like I said, if you're putting out 100,000 barrels a year, that uh, 0 0.1 gallons out of each one of these could be another 50, 100 kegs a year, so keep that in mind. So our system here, the first thing you want to check is that your head pressure is set to where your ZOM reading is, temperature and pressure to your levels of volume. Ours is set to about 12 PSI right now. Moving down here, we have our manifold system. Our manifold system just means pretty much a tube with different um, exits coming out of it. We have half inch ID hoses running off the manifold into these keg taps. All these keg taps have a half inch hex and uh, ball valves on the intake and outtake. Usually you want the, your discharge blowing the same ID. This one's a little smaller than this one. Uh, do what I say, not what I do a little bit. <laughs> so the way you want to start this is you want to pressurize this manifold system. So we'll just take the keg, um, open it up, and I should mention that all these kegs are cleaned and purged and put under CO2 at the pressure of this tank. So after we run our uh, parasitic acid on these tanks, we'll purge them with CO2 and they're all sitting under 12 to 15 PSI right now. So we can open up, tap our keg with our spear valve open, and now this is pushing all that CO2 to balance all our hose lines. So we'll do that to all these kegs in this system. So now that the whole system's under pressure, you're allowed to open your bottom and bring the beer into the kegs. It'll take a second to balance out and then we'll start filling under counter pressure. So now as that whole system's balancing out, just give it a few seconds. Uh, maybe in a perfect world, these hoses, maybe wrap them in some black duct tape so you can avoid that maybe light struck. We've never had a problem with it, getting that 3MBT skunky flavor. Uh, but if you want to wrap these hoses in more of a, a darker color tape to avoid the light, that could help. Maybe leaving a section open uh, so you can kind of see how the beer is flowing. So now with this system balanced out and the beer stopped moving, we'll just slowly crack open uh, the bleed valve on these kegs, feeling with your thumb how it's rolling. Uh, if you have a pressure gauge on your disc dis side charge of these shanks, usually you want it to go down a couple PSI, but definitely keeping it um, under pressure as you feel. We don't, we kind of just go off our thumb technique after doing it a while, but you can do it either way. Should take around, you know, five minutes or so to fill up one of these half barrel kegs. 
So we'll get all these kegs filling up just like that, and I'll show you what it looks like when they start filling up. All right, so you see now that we have foam coming out our discharge side. When it's a little poppy like that, I'll just open up so it runs smooth, and then close it off. So that's a full keg. So right now I'll wait till all these kegs blow a little bit of foam, open and close it so it looks smooth. And then I'll show you what to do after that. All right, with all these kegs bobbed out and the discharge on them is closed, but I'm leaving the spear valve open on all the kegs just so we could check pressure one more time. So during this filling, we've been maintaining the head pressure around 12 PSI, bringing the CO2 on top while it's pushing the beer out. Sometimes the regulator, you might go a little over 12, a little under 12. So that's why I'll, I'll leave these spear valves open. Once all the kegs are full, I'll look at the head pressure. Right now we're about 12.2, so a little bit high. I want all these kegs sitting at 12 PSI. So I'll pop off the CO2 and just really slowly bleed it down to the exact pressure that I want to leave these kegs at or add a little CO2 if you've been bringing it in a little bit slower. So that looks good, we're just a tiny bit over. Now I'll close off my head pressure so nothing's changing pressures. We know exactly what we're at. Now we can close our spear valves on all our kegs. And the beer is locked in here and happy. After the spear valves are closed, you can untap them and move on to your next round. Cheers. All right, with your uh, keg untapped, you're gonna see a little bit of beer right there in the Sankey valve. We just take some sandy water, two, three times, flush, up, flush out that valve. Now I'll put a cap on it and label it. And if it's going to our uh, draft line out front, we'll just leave it like that. Sometimes if you distribute these kegs, um, oh, first let me talk about sometimes if that water's on here, you can, you can see a leak. Like if you have a loose valve or something, you'll be seeing air bubbles coming out and you'll have to replace a gasket or you know that's a leaking keg. So it's another reason to put some water, put some sandy on top of this just to make sure you can see there's no bubbles coming out and there's a leak. And then if you're gonna give this keg to a distributor or a draft count, a lot of times they don't wanna see a puddle of something uh, sitting in the Sankey valve right here. So before it goes off to a distributor, I'll kind of soak up the sanitizing solution, spray it with isopropyl alcohol, dry it off, cap it for the distributor and send it on its way. So hopefully you got a good idea of how we like to keg beer in a pub system here. Cheers.